Welcome back. Of course, I'm Ian the Torch Torchetti, and my hair looks better than yours. But that's not why we're here. I mean, it should be, but that's not why we're here. The fact of the matter is, Comictober still rolls on, and we've got late breaking news, some heartbreaking information, and some warm fuzzies. First, let's get that band-aid just ripped off. Hulu has severed ties with CW, or CW severed ties with Hulu. Either way, this means there's no more new Flash episodes coming out. So all of you looking to get your fix, well, you either need to have CW on your network, buy the DVDs, or just put yourself into a coma and have flashbacks, you know? However, it is kind of funny that they would do this and then, lo and behold, Smallville returns. Yeah, you know, that teen drama based around Clark Kent's early life. I mean, on one end, it was a cute idea, but I never took it too seriously personally. I didn't watch a single episode, which is a tad ironic because I would go on to watch Justice League and Justice League Unlimited that had the talented voice acting of Michael Rosenbaum, who did the voice of Lex Luthor on Smallville. Which is even funnier, because there was an episode in Justice League Unlimited where Lex Luthor and The Flash flip bodies. But instead of doing the typical thing that they did in classic cartoons of the past where Rosenbaum's voice might have been coming out of Lex Luthor, no, it wasn't like that. He was still doing Flash, but if Lex Luthor was in Flash. So who was Lex Luthor? Well, Clancy Brown, you know, the motherfucking Kurrigan from Highlander? Yes. He reprised his role from Superman the Animated Series to come back and deliver an even better version of Lex Luthor, which was shocking because he was almost gold in the original series. Now, of course, I could go on and drool on about, you know, Mark Hamill coming back and never seeming like he ever left. You know, Kevin Conroy certainly never phoned in his delivery as Batman, but, 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 but... I digress. The fact of the matter is, Marvel is kicking ass on television as well as in film. Yeah, come at me, haters. You don't believe me? It started with Daredevil. It went on. with full force, giving us so much wonderful dark drama with a level of realism within a superhero world. We were given quite the effective, quite the driven daredevil. Then we got a Punisher that is beyond believable giving us Electra. And it carries on all the way to today. This dark TV approach that they're handling is great. Which is interesting because Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., the actual network show on ABC, got kind of dark too. Now, is it dropping F-bombs and slitting throats? No. But with them deciding to bring in the Ghost Rider? No, not, not Danny Ketch. No, not Johnny Blaze either. No. Vengeance? They don't have the budget for Vengeance. That guy. Robbie Reyes which is a very interesting approach. 
I mean, are they going to go back to a motorcycle spirit of vengeance anytime soon? Don't know. This guy does a great job. But you can see them on network. You don't have to go to Netflix. So why am I saying Marvel's kicking ass in Netflix? Because my man Cage, that show damn near shut down Netflix. Yeah, that popular. There's a reason why it's getting five star ratings right now. It is so well written. Thematically, it's there. Everything about it. Like, if you wanted to do black exploitation today, this is how it's executed. Some of the dialogue borders on boondocks level, but it still has that realism. Would it come off heavy-handed to someone who is, um, what, what did, what did those SJW assholes say, uh, pigmently challenged? The fact of the matter is, you can get caught up in the show, no matter what. The angles, the choice of music, the slow burn of that first episode, everything about it is there. Mike Coulter is Luke Cage. There's no question. He does kind of channel a younger Michael Jai White, just... He delivers better than the former Spawn actor. Not that Mr. White has been... Not that Mr. White. Michael Jai, thank you. He has gotten a lot better with his theatrical delivery. And I'm more than certain that we're going to see a lot more of Coulter kicking ass very soon. Just... Everything about him is is right there. Whether he's actually done time or not, when he speaks about being locked up as Luke, it's there. You can tell that he's seen some things. And he doesn't want to go down what he thinks might be easy street. He's a man... Carrying the yoke of penance. An unjust yoke at that. It may be a bit played out, but this might have been where it was done right. An innocent man found guilty of a crime he never committed. Locked up. Beaten. Driven just to the brink. But he never cracks. Does he fight back? when backed into a corner when absolutely necessary, but he found his way out. Not in the greatest way. He doesn't even know what to do with these new powers he has. Until he starts seeing it affect him. Literally, at home. He's no Iron Man. He's no Captain. He is a man with power. And he now has his mission. Cottonmouth is on notice. And who knows? Maybe a certain young fighter with fists of iron might show up. They might just keep it focused on him, which is fine. Music's on point, the acting, the delivery of everybody is there. It's not overly stereotypical, but it does have that grit that they're looking for. It just might last. It just might last, people. I mean, the best part about things like Netflix and Hulu having exclusive shows is you no longer have to worry about, oh, uh, well, our, our sponsors were hoping to go in this direction. 
you know, the intended demographic was supposed to be, you know, 8 to 12 year old boys. The curse that unfortunately young Justice fell under. Which I'm playing catch up with and I already know I'm going to be pissed off because although everyone's been nice and not spoiling anything, it's probably going to end on a cliffhanger. But Luke Cage? It's got legs. Betting good money on that. Hell, I'd bet my awesome hair on it. Will we get some cameos? Or will there be nods via dialogue? Maybe a post from the background? Who knows? But wouldn't it be awesome if there was a moment where some kid from Queens drops his book bag while accidentally shoulder checking Luke. And it's Pete. Maybe Tony Stark's limousine rolls through Harlem. Maybe there's a fight later on if they decide to really push Cage and show that he's on the level of superheroism that others are. Maybe he's fighting not necessarily the Hulk, but a Hulk-like abomination. Luke's getting pounded and pounded. He's getting up. He's fighting. But a red glove rests on his shoulder and says, Stand down, soldier. We got this. I mean, wouldn't that be awesome? Maybe a certain Agent Coulson stops by, lets him know that We've been watching you. You show great potential. Fact of the matter is, in just a few short episodes, Luke Cage has made a mark. And honestly, I'm kind of glad about the carbon footprint he's left behind. For those starving for another Sopranos, for those looking for a Tarantino-type television show, Luke Cage. Now, to quote a certain famous drag queen, what? I've got roommates, they watch shows like this. Don't fuck it up. Hey guys, if you've ever been wondering about some of those opening and closing songs, I've got links down below. Go check out my Newgrounds channel. It's where I keep all my music that I do. And I'm dropping more day by day. And who knows? Maybe we can get a dance party set up. Coming soon. Question mark.